So hello guys, before you get into this video, this video is a compilation of all the tutorial videos of map.lib which I have created. So instead of watching all the videos individually, you can watch this compilation in which I have compiled all of that videos into a single video. So it is easier for you to navigate. If you want, you can also watch it through step by step using tutorial playlist or you can directly watch this video. Thank you for watching. Hello everyone, welcome to our brand new tutorial series, Mastering Data Visualization with Matplotlib. I'm Prachet Shah and I'm thrilled to be your guide on this exciting journey into the world of data visualization using the powerful Python library Matplotlib. In this comprehensive tutorial series, we'll dive into the fascinating realm of data visualization where we learn how to effectively communicate insights and unleash the true potential of our data. Whether you are a beginner in data visualization or looking to enhance your skills, this series is designed to cater to all skill levels. To ensure that you get the most out of this tutorial, I have prepared hands-on sessions in Google Colab notebooks. These notebooks provide you with empty code blocks to fill in as we progress through each video. This way, you can actively participate in the learning process and practice your data visualization skills in real time as and when I teach it during the video. So, Throughout this series, we will explore a wide range of visualization techniques and plot types, starting from the basics and gradually moving towards more advanced visualizations. So here's a sneak peek in what's in store for you. So these are some of the plots which you will learn after the end of this course, starting from the group bar graphs to the exploding pie charts, scatter plots and 3D plots, both in 3D and in 2D dimensions. So here are some video contents which we will follow throughout the course. So we will start with the first video being how to access resources for hands-on learning. Then moving on to introduction to matplotlib and creating stunning live line plots. After that, we will learn about the legends, grid and marker customizations to more enrich our plots. Then we will go to histograms and bar plots, learn about scatter plots, pie charts and exploring pie charts. Then we will move on to introduction of the 3D plots. Then we will learn 3D scatter and bar plots. And then we will end it with image manipulation in matplotlib. We love interacting with you viewers. If you have any questions, suggestions or specific topics you'd like us to cover in future tutorials, please don't hesitate to comment down below. Your feedback is essential to me and we'll do our best to create content and caters to all our needs. So, Get ready to embark on an exciting journey with mastering data visualization with Matplotlib. Make sure to subscribe to our channel so you don't miss any upcoming tutorials. Let's dive in and unleash the power of data visualization together. Thank you for joining. Hello guys, welcome to this video of Matplotlib tutorial. In this video, I will be showcasing you how to navigate through Google Collaboratory. And I have provided the link to this notebook in the description of all the videos. So what you can do is go to the link of this video and come to this page of Google Collaboratory Notebook. What you have to do is create your own copy so that you can code along whenever I am showcasing anything in my videos. So Google Collab is a Jupyter Notebook running on Google Cloud. So you can write your code on this notebooks and run it on the uh, web browser itself so you don't need to download any additional resources it is a jupyter notebook instance running on google cloud so you can run this code alongside me on your editor as well i have provided some lines as well which you need to fill as in when i teach in the upcoming tutorials for matplotlib so this is a really great way to code alongside me so you can learn to write the code as well by learning so what you need to do is first navigate to this link and create a copy for yourself as any edits you will do in this file won't be reflected once you come back to this link again. So you need to create a copy of yourself for yourself and you can code alongside me to follow the tutorial. So Google Collab has some libraries inbuilt which you don't need to import. But if you are going to run it in your local Jupyter Notebook instance or your Python IDE, then you need to install matplotlib in your local machine. To do that, you can directly run the command pip install matplotlib, which will download the matplotlib resources on your local machine. 
So as you can see, I have imported some of the libraries here and I have written some code blocks which are which acts like a template for you guys to modify to and result in graphs for the tutorials. So one thing what we'll do is after the tutorial is done and after we have learned everything uh, I have to show you in the tutorial, we will take in a real world data set and create a data visualization project which you can showcase on your resume or your CV so that you can show the recruiters that you have great knowledge or understanding of data visualization techniques. Now data visualization is useful for many of things to uh, visualize the data properly or to find out that data consists of any outliers or any inconsistencies which can be easily noted through the plotted data. So as you can see, this is the final notebook which we will try to create after the end of all the tutorials. We will be creating line plots and bar plots. We will also do some styling as you can see here. We will create histogram pie charts, exploding pie charts, bar graphs and even the group bar charts. So now what is matplotlib? Matplotlib is a visualization library with Python and it is the base for many visualization libraries created with Python like Seaborn, ggplot and many more. So you can go to this website of matplotlib to understand more about it. I would be exploring various functions and features of this library in the upcoming tutorials as well. So from next video, we will start with learning different functions and plots which matplotlib offers so that you can start with a data visualization journey and create stunning masterpieces of uh, data visualization using any library you want, matplotlib being the base of it. So thank you for watching this video and from next video we will start with the tutorial where I will update these code blocks to create final files and show you how to create plots using matplotlib. So, thank so hello guys, in this video we will be learning about line plots in matplotlib so to access this collab notebook you can go to the description and come to this link and you will come to this collab notebook and to create your own copy just save a copy and drive here so you will be able to edit the file and every time you follow the tutorial there is no need to create an own copy you can just directly go into google collab here by searching it on google and keep editing in the saved copy itself so there will be no multiple copies for you so now moving on to line plot so as we know matplotlib is a data visualization library in python so we are importing matplotlib.pyplot here so the pyplot a sub library of matplotlib is collection of functions that help in creating a variety of charts so line charts are used to represent the relation between x and y on different axes. So to create a simple line plot, all we need is a coordinate of x axis and points on coordinate of y axis. And one thing to notice here is that the length of both x and y coordinates needs to be same here to plot the line chart. To plot a simple line chart in matplotlib, all we need is two list of two list or two array of x and y and we just need to pass them in the plt.plot function in matplotlib. So to see what plt.plot does it is I'll directly search plt.plot in matplotlib. So it will take us to the official documentation itself and you can read more about it from here itself. So there are various formats to this we can apply which I will also cover in the upcoming tutorials when we will learn styling in that. So just let's, de let's do editing in this file. I will also create my own copy. So I can work on that and now change the template. So as you can see, I have created my own copy. I will just remove this. Yes, so to run the cells in Collab Notebook, you can uh, click here to run all cells or you can directly individually run all the cells So to run the first cell it will take some time as it will connect to the server and after connecting it will run all the blocks So by that I will write the code here so What we need is to list here or to array you can use numpy arrays as well if you are familiar with it But to keep it simple 
I will first start with normal array. So let's add any random points. So as you can see, I have created four X coordinates and four Y coordinates and to display them on the matplotlib chart, all I'll write is plt.plot and pass in the two coordinates using uh, by just passing their names. And as you can see, if I run this cell, it won't, it will display the graph. But if you're doing it on your local machine, there is a command called plt.show which is completely necessary for the chart to be displayed at your local machine. So it is a good practice to write pld.show as well. It is also important when you will learn about subplots, which will help you create multiple plots in the same frame. Now, as you have created a graph, now you have created this graph. Now you want to add multiple line charts, which overlap or which exist in the same figure for multiple values to do that. We can simply pass in those lists inside multiple plt.plot functions without creating any external figure. So what I will do is I will create these two lists and I will pass in some values. I'm passing any random values. You can pass anything to just work with any graph you want or see how it is working. So as you can see, I just meant added three plt.plot functions of different coordinates. These are the X coordinates and these are the Y coordinates. So it will create one line of these coordinates, second line of these coordinates and third line of this coordinates. So when I run plt.show here, you can see different lines are visible on the uh, chart. So now this chart is not readable as such as you want to show what is, uh, what does X axis stands for? What does Y axis stands for to better uh, show your graph and for better visibility. So what you can do is you can, you can do the, uh, plotting using np dot and numpy arrays as well. So I will show you how to plot it with numpy arrays as well. So I have just created a dummy array or using numpy which creates an array of uh, four elements from one to five. So it can be easily used to create graphs as well. So this also creates the graph using some using numpy address as well. Now to customize the graph, as I said, I want to add the title to the graph. I also want to add the X label, Y label to do this in matplotlib. The functions are plt dot title for the title of the graph. So first you need to plot all your graph. So this is the function I use to plot this graph. So after that, I will add the title of my graph. Now after adding the title, I want to add the X label here. What does these values stands for? So to do that, I will write plt dot X label. So X label allows me to give an X label to the X axis. So I will write here X axis. And similarly for Y label, I will write plt dot Y label here. And I will just write plt dot show. So as you can see, I can easily see my X axis, Y axis and title of my graph here. So as you can see, it is able to label the graph for better understanding the chart dimensions. So we have currently learned about simple line charts using matplotlib. Next we will learn about the legend grid and axis to make our chart more readable and more better. So hello guys, welcome to this video. 
In this video, we will be learning about legend, grid, axis, and further customization of graphs in Matplotlib by adding line styles and marker styles to the existing graphs and also to create subplots to display multiple figures in the graph. Now, to do the hands on coding with me, you can go to the description of this video and go to the collab notebook and create a copy for yourself and keep running the code cells as in how I show you to run it. So let's get into the video. So first we will learn about legend, grid and axis. So a legend is some used to display and describe the elements of the graph. So in the above graph which we created in the previous video, we can see these three lines are plotted using these values but we are not sure in the graph which line stands for which of the plot so legend is used to describe this elements better so by default there are many ways to call legends in matplotlib there are four ways through which you can display a legend on your graph and more documentation on it can be found on the official matplotlib library so we will be learning two of the ways through which you can display a legend in your graph. So the legend also takes in location as parameter on the graph where the given options available are best, upper right, upper left, lower left, lower right, right and many more. These all are according to the axis of our graph. So I will show you a code for legend. So to simply write the legend, you all need to write here is pld.legend and for the first type of display of legend, we pass in the uh, labels for our plots using an array and based on the plot function, we will find in, uh, fill in the label names. So this first plot would be given the label one of the list second plot would be given the second label and so on so let's uh, give the first plot as one second plot as two and third plot as three and i'll run the code so as you can see we can directly see our legend here which describes the line under color so it is easier to visualize now we can also add a location parameter here based on the above uh types of location these also are available in the documentation do check it out after seeing this video to learn more about this so let's try about uh, uh center left so center left should come around here so i'll just change this to center left and run as you can see it will come here uh, you can directly add the default location equal to best which will display the plot by default on the upper left if the line is inter matching here it will display it somewhere else based on the availability now moving on to the second type of displaying the legend so here we have we only pass in the legend and just give the location but instead of passing the labels here we will directly pass the labels of the plots directly in the plot function so that it is easier for us to maintain the uh, labels and we don't need to change the array every time. So what we'll do is we'll pass a label parameter in the plot. So I will just pass in the labels on these plots. You can change these labels however you want. And I'll run this code. So this is the second way of representing labels in our legends. So the first way is to pass in an input array and second way is to pass the labels directly in the plot function and just calling the plot function. So in this way we can display the legend in our graphs. So now moving on to grid and axis modification. So what is grid? Grid are the horizontal and vertical lines which are used to distinguish our graph and make it more readable. To show the grid on our graph, all we need to do is add plt.grid and just write true. 
by default value of pld.grade is false in matplotlib so if we run the code with pld.grade we can see that horizontal and vertical lines are displayed on our graph and it makes it much more easier to visualize complex graphs and see where the points lie it is still not very much readable but we will make it more readable by the end of the video when we will apply marker style and line style to our charts now this is about grid now what are axes so axis is uh, it takes in four values which are an array of x start x final y start and y final so what it means is it gives the value of x start which takes in the minimum value from the given values we can customize our axis to display the uh, minimum x value and final x value to better display our graph so to add the axis we the axis documentation can also be found on matplotlib it takes in these four arguments as i said and there are different ways of passing it as well what it does is it sets the limits for the graph so we will write it so to display the axis all we need is plt dot axis and we pass in the array of x start x final y start and y final so by default our x start is 1 and x final is 4 so let's try to change our x start to 0 and x final to say 7 and by default our y start is also 1 i will add it as minus 2 and our y final as 10 and if I run this code now, as you can see, the graph will change and my axis limits will get changed based on the input array I am passing in the pld.axis. So this is a great way to uh, make graph more readable and center our graph as based on the input values. Now, making it more readable, we will add line style and marker style to these graphs. Now, what are line and markers? So for each coordinate, there is a point which is called as a marker and there is a style of line which can be applied as well. So by default in matplotlib, there are available shapes are square, pentagon, point, circle, diamond and there are many more. You can find more from these links which I have mentioned in the collab as well. So you can directly You can go to this site and see different types of styles available for lines and markers as well. So these are the markers which we can use on our plots, plots to make it more, more better and more easily visualizable. So to apply the styling for line and marker, what we can do is, uh, this is a default graph which is with the which is without the line style and marker style so there are certain things which we can add such as we can also add the color to the line we want by default this uh, line is blue in color so let's say i add as color purple then we can add the line style so line style has many options as i showcased in this document the available line styles are dash and dash densely dash loosely dotted and many more so let's keep our line as uh, dotted then we can apply the line width as well so line width is the width of a line and it takes in and uh, float value not a string value then we can also give it as a marker uh, let's give d which is diamond as a marker there are many more markers which we can use then there is also something called as marker size which will help us change the size of a marker let's keep it 5 and that is a marker edge color so what marker edge color is I will show you when I run the code as it will be more visible then so as you can see I applied it using these arguments a simple way to apply the stylings directly on the plot is just passing in the string with the line style and marker style. So in this way, 
we can directly pass in both line style and marker into the plot without using those keywords so when i'll run this code you can see this so the first thing i changed here was i used the dotted line which is represented using this line style line width is 3 and marker used is diamond and marker edge color is green so as you can see in this marker there is a slight green in the edge i will increase the marker size to 10 to easily uh, visualize that as you will see here there is this green marker edge around this uh, marker which is applied using this marker edge color property now we'll also apply styling here and i'll add the line I'll add this line style which is the uh, line dotted style and I will apply the marker as pentagon which is P and I'll also add the marker size as equal to 10 here as well and if I run this code you can see I have applied these markers I have, I have applied square in the second dot and pentagon in the third dot and the line style has also changed in this way we can apply line style color style marker marker edge to make our graph more visually appealing and create a better and better visualizable graph now moving to creating subplot now what are subplots i will just show you subplots are having multiple graphs side by side so that you can display those graphs differently now in this graph i am plotting these three lines on the same graph but if I wanted to plot these lines on different graphs, I'll have to create a subplot and then plot these lines inside that individual subplot. Now syntax to create a subplot is such that first we have to create a figure and we need to define the rows and columns in that figure. So rows and columns follow a grid format in the subplot as you create two rows and one column it means that there will be two rows in our subplot and there will be one column if i create two columns one row the, the graph would be horizontally displayed in two rows and in one column so we need to specify the rows and columns for our subplot and we need to create an initial figure to display our plots on so to create a figure we simply add plt.figure which will be creating a figure there is a parameter called fig size which will help us create the size of our plot as we will be creating a horizontal plot here i am giving more space to the x-axis than the y-axis here and there is something called as face color which is a style which you can apply onto any plots you want it changes the background color which is the this inside color into whatever color which is passed here so to create a subplot let's have rows as uh, one and let's suppose we have three columns now as i said it follows a grid format we will create three charts which we will add our plots to so let's first create a chart one to create a subplot all we need to do is we need to use the dot add subplot uh, property on our created figure so whatever you name you give to the figure here you need to add that name to create the subplot so what we'll do is on the figure i will add the add subplot function and i will specify its rows columns and i will specify its number so our rows and columns are three here and as it follows a grid format the total number of available space would be rows into columns in this case it will be 3 so whenever we add the whenever we add the uh, add subplot we need to pass in the number where it will display so i will just show you on notepad so if we are having three rows uh, three columns and one row it will be something like this it will have one row and it will have three columns it will be something like this 
and in this the number would be such that one two and three so if i pass a number as one then this chart one plot would be displayed in this position and if i add suppose number two here then this plot would be displayed here if my rows and columns are such like two cross three then total available spaces are six then it will carry through and we can add the following charts like this so we can use this uh, grid format to show the position of our graph so let's create a third chart as well so i have created three charts so to better understand it let's uh, Uh, create this six format. So I have added a fourth chart which will be displayed here when I run the plt dot plot function. As I have given two rows and three columns. So to create the plots, all we need to do is call the chart which we have created and add the plot function like we had added before. And I will also add some style to it. Now I will create my four plots. Let's change the styling. So when I run this, four plots would be displayed. Uh, there is an error. Okay, so this is not a valid type of line style as a dot is no line style. So yeah, as you can see, there are these plots which are available as we have created. Again, the same error. Yeah. So as you can see, the face color is cyan, which I created before. The line style and marker style is here and it is displayed based on the grid format 1, 2, 3 and 4 here like this. If I increase my fig size, you will see that my graph gets stretches and it gives me a better visualization. So based on the grid which we are going to use, we can change our fig. We can change our fig size. So I'll just change it to rows 1 and column 3 as we are not using the fourth chart anymore. As you can see our graphs are displayed here and we can even add further styling to it. Let's say I add the color equal to red here and I run it. So yeah, as you can see everything works the same. You can add the same things, you can add the axis, you can add the grid to the subplots as well. And you can add any styling you want. You can work or you can trial and error what type of styles you want to add to this and further add changes to it and if you have any doubts do feel to mention down in the comment section below i would be happy to help you there so so hello guys welcome to this video so in this video we will be looking at creating histogram pie chart and exploding pie charts using matplotlib if you are new here and you would like to code alongside me then you can check out the collab link in the video description you can make a copy for yourself and do with me as in when i code if you are still not sure how to code then i have created a dedicated video on it you can check it out in the master in data visualization playlist on youtube so moving on to the tutorial so what is a histogram so a histogram is basically used to represent data provided in form of groups. It is an uh, accurate method for graphical representation of numerical data distribution. So it is a type of bar plot where x-axis represents the bin or the ranges in which the values lie and y-axis gives the value of frequency. So if we go on the official documentation of the histogram function on matplotlib, you can see the various parameters we can pass to create an histogram. So some of the main parameters required are the X and the bins. 
so bins is something which is default none and x is the array which contains the values so you can also check out the various examples which are provided by mat.lib itself to learn more about different types of histogram and how to draw them there are various examples available here which create animated histograms or create histograms of sine waves and also histogram to create distribution curves like normal distribution f distribution which belongs to statistical part of mathematics so let's see how to create a normal histogram it's very easy to create a simple histogram in matplotlib so this is i have created an array of thousand values which are randomly added using the randand function from numpy i will run the code blocks before yeah to create the histogram what i will simply do is i will just use the plt.hist function and i would pass in my array x now this would automatically plot the histogram and plot it using the bins bins are none so it will just create a range of 1 to create the histogram as you can see this histogram is created if i run it again it will give me the same result as it is creating the same x value randomly if you want to create a cumulative histogram so a cumulative histogram is something which cumulates the values and shows the sum of the values and creates a increasing histogram bin chart so to do that we use the same uh, type of function which is plt.hist we pass in the value x and we just change the parameter cumulative equal to true we can also apply styling here uh, which we saw in the previous videos how to apply stylings and we can just write the plt.show to show this graph as well so in this way we can create the histogram we can create both the cumulative and the normal histogram we can also see some of the examples and create the distribution curves or use both line chart and the histogram to create a function such like this which can be used to measure the statistical analysis of data so in this way we can create histogram in matplotlib this is a simple histogram to find out more about it you can officially go to the matplotlib documentation available or go through any of the other resources which matplotlib provides or any other people who have created advanced graph may provide as this is a beginner course i will keep the limitation limitation of this graph till here it only If you have any doubts which you are getting while creating this, you can definitely mention in the comment section below, and I will try my best to answer those as well. So let's try to just copy the code from here and try to print and change some stuff to see how histogram actually works. So this is a histogram which uses the bins parameter. Uh, this is RNG, right? So this is the histogram code which uses the n bins and n points. So n points is our array of values, and n bins is the number of bins here, which is this here is one bin minus two to minus one. So this is a bin here, and it is creating a standard normal distribution curve using given number of points, and this is also creating a standard normal distribution curve with some mathematical addition to it. and it creates two subplots to plot them which we have seen before in previous videos how to create subplots they have used similar methods to create subplots and create this graph so they have passed in the values and they have passed in the total number of bins to plot the histogram as you can see both of these histograms are plotted using the total number of bins as 20 so this in this way many different histograms can be created to get to know your data better now moving on to pie chart and exploding pie charts now pie chart is some kind of graph which will be most used in a business scenario where you want to present your data in a clean and user friendly format pie chart is used to uh, display see only one series of data and it is displayed as a part of percentage of the given data so if i have values the size of the pie chart width if you have not seen how pie chart looks like i will just show you so a pie chart looks something like this 
where each section here is the is divided by percentage which is calculated using the sum of values which are there in the pie chart so to create the pie chart we simply need the labels and the values of the uh, labels and values of the uh, entities we want to plot so to create a simple pie chart first i'll just show you the documentation so matplotlib also has a specific pie plot documentation which we can follow uh, explode is something which is used to create exploding pie charts which i will cover in just a few minutes and there are other stylings and other type of parameters which you can read about from the matplotlib documentation one important uh, parameter which uh, is auto pct is used to label the wedges with their numeric values and is used to change the input value in our pie chart so it is something which is customizable as as and when needed so let's create some labels and values so for labels let's consider uh, suppose some name of countries let's take india usa japan britain and let's say germany so i have taken five labels and i'll just assign them random values Let's say I assign 20, 30, 50, 6, 70 and suppose 35. So these are the values which I have assigned to those labels. So 20 will be assigned to India, 30 will be assigned to USA in such order. To plot the pie chart, we'll use simply the plt.py function. We'll pass in the values and we'll pass in the labels as well labels equals labels you can directly pass in labels and we'll use the auto pct to format our output so this would output is that uh, it would output the float as 1.1 it means that it will output the number as percentage dot till one decimal only it will plot till one decimal only instead of getting the uh, final value if suppose the percentage is 33.3333 percent then it would only plot 33.3 percent and would not extend the whole percentage and uh, make our graph look bad so if i run this code you can see a uh, great bar chart plots here you can obviously add here uh, if you want you can add the legend here i'll add the plt.legend and i would pass in the labels As you can see, labels would also be here and I can definitely give it some title. All the previous styling which we saw before in previous videos can be applied to all of these graphs as it will make it look better. The one more thing which makes this look better is the exploding pie charts. Now to create exploding pie charts, we'll simply add a variable called as exp which will take in the percentage of the values to create the explosion from so i'll just copy this code here i will just add the explode here so explode is an list which takes in the exploding amount or the exploding percentage so if we go on to the documentation and see the explode, you will see that it's an array which specifies the fraction of radius which you want to offset by each way. So what is this? You will understand when it will get plotted. So let's give some offset. Yeah. So I'll give it just offset and I'll just add it in my pld.plot function. I will just add it using explode equal to exp array which I passed. Once I plot it, my pie chart would create a great exploding pie chart, which is really great as it gives us better visualization of our data. I'll just add it here as well to create a better chart. So in this way, we can create a visually appealing pie chart, which can be used to display our series data very accurately and with a much more easy sense of grasping. So this type of charts are very commonly used as many 
distribution or sales fraction in business basically are shown using these type of charts so i hope you like this video and feel free to comment down below if you would like me to add anything more to it or change this hello guys welcome to this video and in this video we will be looking at creating bar charts and creating scatter plots so a bar chart is a graph that represents category of data with rectangular bars with lengths and heights which is proportional to the values which they represent so they can be either plotted both horizontally or vertically so let's see some documentation of bar plots in matplotlib so a bar plot in matplotlib is plotted using the dot bar function and it takes an input such as the x which is the values the height uh, which is the uh, value of the label x the width by default is 0.8 the width is width of bar and a width parameter is very useful when we are creating group bar charts which we will also see in this video itself so to create the bar chart in python we just need to pass in the labels x and the height required for the values of those uh, va values of those bar plots so to create a simple bar chart we just need value x and height and a width parameter if you want to change it so if i am to create a bar chart here in the given copy so to get to this collab notebook you can either follow a full tutorial which i have uploaded or you can just go to the collab link in the description and make a copy for yourself from here and keep editing with me so that we stay on the same page so to create a simple bar chart all we need is the labels and values which we need to pass in the plt.bar function so let's write some values here let's say for values we'll keep name of countries you can keep it anything you want let's go with these five countries and for values let's give them some random values like yeah, this looks good now to plot the bar chart actually all we'll do is we'll just write plt.bar and pass in x which is the labels here and we'll pass in the values uh, so that does it and that creates the bar chart for us we can also add in some style parameters which we saw in a previous video so you can add those as well so if i run this code i will get a simple bar chart here as you can see the width of this bar chart looks really huge and to change that we can just pass in the width parameter to make it more readable or more better visually appealing so as you can see the width of bar chart we has reduced you can also add the title and the labels if you want i'll add it to show you so dot x label is used to represent the x uh, axis sticker here and dot y label is used to represent y values on running this you will get a bar chart with the tickers as well and you'll also get the title here as well you can change the stylings here as well the width parameter is very useful when we will create a group bar chart you can also find some great examples on the matplotlib library as well so we created a simple bar chart demo which i showed you here in this code block now we will move on to creating a group bar chart so a group bar chart is basically when multiple bar plots are used for comparing different data sets when one variable is changing so we can convert our bar chart into a stacked bar chart by just creating a subgroup of bar charts on each other using the position parameter so moving on to creating the group bar charts i'll just go here and as you've seen i already uh, uh, written this code blocks for you in which i have mentioned the labels which i did here as well and i've given two values one is for the left bar chart and one would be for the right bar chart so to create the group bar chart we need to first specify the label positions for tickers on x-axis 
To do that, you can directly store it in a positions variable and use the np.arrange function on the number of labels, which will give the values on the x, which will give us an array of positions. To plot those bar chart, we'll simply use pld.bar function two times. One time we will give in the positions, values, and the color, let's say we'll give it red this time. And let's give it a width of 0.3. Now this width here is very important as we will use the same thing in the second plot and I'll just add position plus 0.3. Now this 0.3 is the width of this as the bar would be position 0.3 times the right of this position. So it will stick to each other and will create a group like format and I'll just give it values to and I'll change this color to blue so it is better visualized. Now, to position the display of X stickers. Now, X stickers is this value which is centrally aligned to the bar chart. If we want to display the values in between of the two bar charts in group plot, something like uh, in between of all these three, then we will use the plt.x ticks which help us uh, specify the position of x stickers which will be positions plus 0.15 which would be the center of bar plot of both the values now you need to play with match something to uh, display your group bar charts in better format if you have multiple bars in this case i'm using two bars so i will give it in middle of both of those which is the middle of width and if I'm taking three, then I would give it the width of the middle bar. So in this way, you can create a group bar charts. If I run this code, you can see that it creates a group bar charts with the X stickers in between of those two stacks. So this is really useful to create a group bar charts. Now let's see some example to create an horizontal bar charts from Matplotlib itself. So in Matplotlib, there is an example which is displaying the horizontal bar chart. So this is basically a percentile based horizontal bar chart. Now to do this, they have used the they have used various functions to reduce the number to percentile and so. So you can go through this example and check to learn more about creating the horizontal bar charts itself. Now moving on to scatter plots. Now what are scatter plots? So scatter plots are basically used to observe relationship between variables and uses dots to represent the relationship between them. So scatter method in matplotlib is used to draw a scatter plot. I will just show you where you can find the documentation. You just write matplotlib and scatter, you will get the scatter function documentation. So it is used to draw a scatter plot and scatter plot are widely used to represent relation among variables and change in one affects the other. So the matplotlib.scatter function takes in two coordinates x and y by default and those are the uh, locations on the x and y axis. So if you are having a graph and you want to display a dot on that graph, you will need the x coordinate and y coordinate. Here I have taken 200 of random x coordinates and 200 random y coordinates. And there is also a parameter called size and color for these coordinates to display them better. So size is generally given default as this and color is an array of colors which is optional. So colors is also uh, generated randomly and size is given as random number till 200 times 100 as size is in the 1 by 72 decimal. So, to create a simple scatter plot, all we need is the x coordinates, y coordinates, size of the uh, dots, and colors for the dots. So, to draw a beautiful scatter plot, all we need is we need to pass all these parameters inside the pld.scatter function. Uh, we'll pass in the x coordinates, we'll pass in the y coordinates, we'll pass in the size, we will pass in the colors. And we can also add some styling like uh, adding markers to it or you know adding the 
uh, with which is also discussed in the customization of graphs videos which is which will be present in the tutorial series uh, video 2 or video 3 we can also change in some markers to you know better visualize our graph we can add 3d effects to the scatter plots as well more examples on this could be uh, found on the official matplotlib documentation as well or you can found it on google itself so you can see that it is used in various formats scatter plots are very prominent in displaying the clustering models in machine learning where the points are displayed on the graph and clusters are created using visual representation and it is checked using the model prediction so these can be done using scatter plots there are various tutorials available on matplotlib documentation itself so this comes to an end for this video in this so hello friends welcome to this video in this video we will be looking at introduction to three dimensional plotting using matplotlib in python and we will be looking to plot 3d bar plots scatter plots and line plots using matplotlib in three dimension so before we move on to the video do like and share this video so it can reach to a wider audience and subscribe to my channel to receive upcoming notifications now i'll move on to this collab notebook the link to this collab notebook will be available in the channel uh, in the video description alongside the channel description and you can also find a dedicated video on how to navigate to collab notebook which i have mentioned in the playlist of this tutorial series so we have learned till now about bar plots scatter plots line plots styling we can apply histograms and now we will move on to 3d plotting so what is 3d plotting so in 3d plotting 3d plots are very important tools for discussing data that have three dimensions such as data that have two independent and one dependent variable so by plotting data in 3d plots we can get a deeper understanding of data that have three variables we can use various matplotlib library functions to plot 3d plots the main thing which we have to do here in 3d plotting is we have to change the axis of the normal plots so by default matplotlib has two dimensional plots as default and to change it into three dimensional we need to change something called as projection parameter in the matplotlib figure so i'll just uh, show you an example of how it can be done so for that you need to i'll just create a new code block to just show you to create how the axis 3d axis of the chart looks like when you add the projection equal to 3d so i'll just create a figure so after creating the figure i will create a subplot from that figure I will create a subplot from the figure and after that I will add the projection equal to 3D parameter to it. So that will create a 3D parameter. So if I run this, it is connecting, oh I will have to run all the code blocks before it will give me an error. We will wait for this to connect first. So I'll just run this cells and then I will run this. It will just take a time. So before, yeah, as you can see, this is the 3D grid on which we will plot our three dimensional graphs on. So in this way, we can create a three dimensional projection grid using the figure and adding subplot to that figure so that we can display our 3d plots to it now moving on to the documentation for 3d plots so you can learn more about it you can just go to google and go to 3d plots and matplotlib and it will give uh, send us to that documentation there are various plots available here which can be seen to create the 3d plots so in this video we will cover the 3D histograms or the 3D scatter plots alongside the 3D line plots as well. There are various examples which you can see from this official documentation itself. If you go on to any one of the example, 
you will see that they have also created a projection equal to 3D to create this 3D grid for plotting the data. So there are various examples you can see here as well. So that will help you to better grasp how this works. So this above figure here, this is a three dimensional axis which is enabled and data can be plotted in these three dimensions with this being the x axis, this being the y axis and this being the z axis. So to plot a 3D line graph, we will just need th uh, the x, y and z coordinates. So using I have defined these three arrays with random x coordinates, y coordinates and z coordinates in the default code block. You can change this as well and for this I'll again to plot this 3D line plot I'll need to create a figure again to create this grid like box. Uh, instead of copying I'll just write it again. I'll add the projection equal to 3D. This projection equal to 3D is the most important part. And after doing that, I'll create a 3D grid. And I will just normally plot the all the three coordinates inside this 3D grid. So to plot the normal line graph which we have seen in the previous videos, we would just pass in the two parameters X and Y. And to plot the 3D plot, we will just pass in the third parameter Z. So on doing this, we see the line here. We can also further customize the line by adding further parameters to this plot function, which you can surely do. As you can see, if I'll change this parameters here, my lines will also get changed. So depending on that, as you can see, it comes to four instead of nine. So you can turn around and, you know, do some examples to further learn this topic better. Moving on to 3D scatter plots. Now 3D scatter plots is a great way to represent data in a better format. So to show the 3D scatter plot, we will use the dot scatter function itself, but we would again need a subplot of 3D projection to display that. So this time I'll copy this uh, two lines, which creates a 3D grid, which I had showcased two times before. So this creates my plot. Now to add the data into this, what I will require is if you remember the tutorial of scatter plot, I'll just scroll there. We give it X and Y, which is the coordinates of X and Y. And we will, as we had seen for scatter plots, we require the X coordinates and Y coordinates alongside the size and the colors parameter to display our uh, points on the scatter plot. So for creating 3D scatter plot, all these things would remain the same, but we would require an extra Y location to display our scatter points on the y, uh, on the Z axis as well. We will need a Z coordinate. Sorry for the previous mistake. We will need a Z coordinate alongside all this to display the scatter plot in the three uh, in the three D dimension. So as you can see, I have copied the same code from above here. I have taken in the X, Y and Z coordinates alongside the size and colors for the points. I have created a 3D plot using projection equal to 3D. Now I will just add the normal scatter function and pass in this three coordinates here. I can write the colors equal to colors here to specify the colors and I'll specify the size as well as I want to differentiate all the points randomly. And I'll just add a marker to better display the plot. So this creates my 3D plot here, which is a 3D scatter plot of different uh, points on the X, Y and Z dimension. Now to better understand how the X, Y and Z coordinates work here in the 3D plotting dimensions, we will create an example of 3D bar plot. Now 3D bar plot will make you understand how the plotting dimensions work more better. Now moving on to 3D bar plots. Now if you are using my collab, you will know that I have given certain code blocks here to create the 3D bar plot. We will define the distance from plane. So if we consider X, Y and Z, the distance of plane would be how far the point are from the given uh, axis. So I'll just plot it first to show you how it is done and then I will explain it using the graph. 
so i'll create the 3d projection here again now add the projection equal to 3d parent yeah. so after doing this i will create an array of x y and you know z coordinates to display the result i'm randomly adding five points you can also create anything so i'll leave the z here zero by default as changing this would result in bar uplifting from plane i will show you how that is done and this dx dy dz are the parameters which are required which uh specifies the length of bar graph in the direction so for now i will just uh create random points here you can change it as well yeah so i have uh, defined these points which are x y z and the length which is dx dy and dz to plot the bar plot you have the function called bar 3d in the matplotlib library you will use that function and pass in these three parameters alongside their dx dy and dz and i'll just also pass in color to better visualize it. once i write this code and run this code it will give me a bar plot now we will see what x y and z means first here which is distance from plane now as you will see the first plane has distance of 1 2 3 4 and 5 from the x axis so it would mean that the first plane so the first bar block is at distance of 1 the second bar plot is distance of 2 third block is distance of 3 and so on in this way it is a distance where the length of bar implies that how much length of the bar is in the direction so the first point here has a direction of 1 hence its length is 1 in the x direction the second block also has length of 1 hence it also has a length of second as 1 y has the length of 1 so it is also 1 but if you will see the last point has the length of 2 in the x direction it would mean that it would stretch for the length of 2 units in the x direction similarly for the uh, z direction so the z direction is this plane so if you see the second point is 8 units in the z direction it would mean that this block here would be 8 units in the z direction and it is one direction in y hence it would grow to 1 in the y axis so in this way the length of bar is calculated and this is the position of the points so 1 comma 3 is the position of this block then there is 2 comma 6 which is position of this block now z here means the upliftment so if i change the second point to 2 it would mean that it will start from second height on the plot so it would uplift it from the plot as you can see the bar plot here of the second coordinate has been uplifted by 2 which has reduced its size compared previously i will change it to 0 again so this would result in uh, creating stunning bar plots using 3d and we can better visualize your data so that you can create uh, great plots which give you insights about your data as well. So to create a simple 3D plots, you require all this thing. The important being creating the 3D axis grid. After that, you can go to the matplotlib documentation to see various different graphs available. The weather graphs are better created using the 3D plots as it helps to visualize the contours or the geographical locations in the 3d format so those are preferred to create heat maps for weather and weather conditions and you know geographical topologies so this comes to an end for this video in this video we learned about introduction to 3d plotting 3d bar graphs 3d scatter plots and 3d line plots thank you for watching this video do like and share this video and subscribe to my channel for further videos thank you for watching do mention in the comments below if you would like me to see something else or explain something again. Thank you.